All right, good morning. We are here at the Nichols Arboretum Peony Garden with David Mishner. This is for all of our members and all of our MBGNA community. If you know our Peony Garden, you have seen David here. You might have gone on one of his tours. Um, we are giving you guys this little virtual tour because we are not allowing anyone to visit the Peony Garden this year, unfortunately, due to COVID-19 restrictions. However, we wanted to share the Peony Garden with you this year and to show you how beautiful it is, but to encourage you to come next year in 2021. Good morning, David. Good morning, Madison. How are you today? It's a gorgeous day to be out in the Peony Garden. I just wish that uh, everyone enjoys us next year, as you're saying, in 2021. But we thought we'd give you some highlights of what's happening here, and we'll broadcast it right after the season. Absolutely. So what peonies are we going to talk about today, David? Well, we're going to talk about peonies that are luscious or memorable for various reasons. Just chosen today, June 8th, here early in the morning. And isn't this one just a gorgeous color? Beautiful. This is Mary Brand from the Brand Nursery of Minnesota. And they were well known for having very full, saturated colors as one of the triumphs of their breeding. Stunners. Beautiful. Aren't these just gorgeous? From the form and the doubleness, it's clearly a late 1800s, Ooh. very early 20th century candy. It is one of our unknowns where the, the labeling over the decades got lost. So this is why the work with my colleague, Dr. Stockton of Lasava of the Central Botanic Garden Mint of the National Academy of Sciences of Belarus and colleagues there is so important because we're working on molecular markers, kind of like DNA fingerprinting. So we'll be able to tell based on our collection and others who it's related to and then go back through the literature for that breeder in that time period and place it with confidence. But wow. there's no way you're getting rid of it because it's just Mm -hmm. They're beautiful. So these guys over here, this whole bed is a French cultivars of the late 1800s to very early 20th century. And the juxtaposition of plants is humorous because what we have here is avalanche, which was considered one of the best whites right at the beginning of the 20th century. And you can see Isn't why. that just stunning, this mound of like a little bit of snow. Beautiful. With a little bit of red, and it sounds like an Agatha Christie uh, novel because then we have Inspector La Bird over <laughs> here coming up to see what's going on in the avalanche. Love that. Isn't, wouldn't these two be just sumptuous in a bouquet? Oh, for sure. So here mm -hmm. we are with Moses Hall, clearly named for a guy. One of the things that was appreciated in the early 20th century and just within the decades just leading up to it were flowers that would go from an opening tinge and then change shading. Ooh, There's wow. several things to notice about Moses Hall. This is what was called a hose and hose. Hose meaning a sock or a stocking or a flower and flower. You've got the outer guard petals, you've got these inner petaloids, and then you've got a second set of petaloids that are much more dramatic and taller and flaring up. Mm. And in all of these, the color gradation is going right across as it opens to going almost to white. Amazing. For modern cultivars where this form is done, often you get color differences between the, the inner foot flower and the outer. But this is clearly an elegant flower. And it also shows the idea that these were guys' flowers. This is named for a guy, Moses. Sure. So here we are with Carl Rosenfeld. One of the great quests in the late 1800s was for a strong red without blue that didn't fade. And Carl is well on the way, and it, he's making it much of the way. Look at how red it is, and although it does what I call frost, this one does frost later in the in the bloom cycle, it's still full. It's quite the bomb that is with the outer guard petals and then all the petals in the middle. And it just gives you this magnificent three-dimensional display with some nuanced color variation. 
totally enchanting era. There were two great reds. We've seen Carl Rosenfeld, Longfell, Longfellow, how it was another great one. We're a little bit late in the season for it, but you can see that we're getting a more uniform and more intense red with not quite as much blue in it. And one of the things that was being sought, but it didn't happen until later in the 20th century, is getting really good, strong reds over into our... We are at the Fawn. The Fawn is a phenomenal peony because from a distance it looks to be this wonderful, frosted, light pink. But when you get up and you look at the individual petals, you can see that individual cells are reddish and the rest of them are white. Right. And so it's this flecking, this almost pointillous um, coloration in the flower is what's giving you the visual depth and richness. It's stunning. After the First World War, there began a real shift in peony aesthetics. And peonies have been beloved for centuries, but each generation likes to have a different twist. When Lois Kelsey came out after World War I, some years later, I like to call it, not your mother's peony. We love that. Look at this whole spidery look to it. It's gorgeous. You can see some of it is still much more almost looking like a classic peony of the era. But it's so modern. You can imagine <laughs> the jazz musicians going on in the background. Oh, yeah. Absolutely classic. We are out here cruising the peony gardens. We are. Kind of like butterflies or bees going, <laughs> ooh, let's go do that one. <laughs> and this is Pride of Elsa. Pride, this is Pride of Essex. Clearly at Kelway for a name like that. Kelway out of England. Aren't these just enormous full flowers? For a bouquet, they're a bit shot in terms of a little bit overbloomed at this point, but I don't care. They're still <laughs> gorgeous. They are. Amazing. I love mm. these. Ready. So here we are at Polar Star. Think of the North Star. This is a Japanese style, and it's called that for where the style came from, not where they're bred. And what you have are the guard petals, and the inner petals have been turned, and anthers have been turned, in particular the anthers have been turned into these petaloids. They cut, you can see they might have once had pollen in their earlier development, but they don't now. And this is what makes a gorgeous Japanese style. The carpels, see how gorgeous they are with the pink tips and the green bodies? All of these color harmonies and, are working together to make this such a sensational flower. They come in all colors, whites, pinks, reds. The white ones I personally call fried eggs. Gay Paris was introduced in the, I believe, the late 20s or early 30s, right at about the Depression. And is it, it just stunning? With this outer set, it's another one of these Japanese style because everything's been converted over into these petaloids and the color progressions are phenomenal. One little secret as a, if you want for cut flowers, that is if you want your flower peonies for cut flowers, is the central petaloids are very sensitive to gravity. So these have now formed flaring up because the flower was over. So if you wanted them perfectly formed, more like this one, you need to stake them because they won't readjust once they've set. It's stunning. This is Faith Fenton. Faith Fenton was the journalistic name of a Canadian school teacher who would have been fired had it been known who she really was because she was a crime journalist. Ooh. And she covered many of the crimes of Southern Canada, worked with the police, and ended up in the Yukon Territory. Faith Fenton is important to us because it celebrates also Canadian breeders, not just America, United States, and French and British. It's a gorgeous plant, and if you want the whole story on Faith Fenton, just Google her, and you'll find out 
this courageous and very adventuresome woman who was school teacher by day, crime reporter by night. Dr. Upjohn loved, in fact, may have been infatuated with a number of the French breeders and the deliciously full flowers that they were breeding after the 1870s and 1880s. This one he wrote about, and it's clear he really appreciated the fullness, the coloration, the slight flecking. And he said any peony of lesser value would have been dissuaded by its name, which is Triomphe de l'Exposition de Lille, <laughs> which is basically the triumph or the glory of the Lille ex Industrial and Arts Exposition. Wow. It's not common in the trade. It is sumptuous. We mm. found a friend in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to introduce yeah, yourself? Tell yeah, tell us who you are. Uh, my name is Chad Mashinsky. Um, I'm, my official title is Woody Plants and Trails Technician, uh, but uh, during this pandemic, um, I've shifted roles a bit and I'm occasionally working in the Peony Garden, whereas where I actually started working as an intern. Um, and I, I really love working in here. Uh, it's, it's great seeing all the people that come in and enjoy this space. Um, it's, it's nice to be surrounded by a lot of beautiful flowers throughout the morning. Um, and it's, it's interesting to see them uh, start in the in the spring as just little purple little purple buds popping out of the soil and seeing them come to this uh, it's, a, it's a very very neat experience great thanks Chad we hope you've enjoyed our little digital vignette of the peony garden but more importantly that you'll come in 2021 2022 which is our centennial and every year thereafter this peony garden is the legacy of Dr. Upjohn, class of 1875, farmer of Upjohn Pharmaceutical Company. He loved peonies, and most of these are from his much larger collection that he had assembled in Brook Lodge outside of Kalamazoo, Michigan. This is one of the classic historic collections of herbaceous peonies in North America. It is, to my mind, the best and deepest of the historic peony collections. For us, that's before 1950, with the bulk of this from the 1920s and before. It captures a period and a spirit. And although the color range isn't that which we see in modern peonies, which have other species used, these are the ones of fullness, fragrance, and romance. Come and relish.